All right, folks, check this out. Today is going to be uh, the wrap up video pretty much of the 200X build here. Check that dog out. We got the gas tank. Uh, we're going to be doing all this today. We're going to be installing the gas tank and I sh I'm going to show you guys how I flushed it out, how I got all the rust out of it, how it's all crystal clear inside of there. We're going to hook up the install of the gas tank. We're going to rebuild the carburetor, which I did some carburetor uh, rebuild a while back, but I never posted the footage. We're going to get into that today. And uh, yeah, look at the graphics. We put the graphics package on. Look, we got the 200X up here. And we got the 200X up here. We got some uh, show us stickers on the swing arm. And yeah, what else do we got? Oh yeah, we're going to... One more thing about the gas tank too is I painted this and I did all the body work myself. So it actually had a dent in it. So I had to pull a dent. I used a cheap Amazon dent puller. And you can see how I, how I got that thing rolling. And yeah, let's, uh, without further ado, let's get into this thing. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Ah, check it out. The next build is coming here in probably the next uh, couple of weeks or so. We're gonna start tearing down a new machine and we're gonna start uh, getting together another build. Yes, and we're going back to four wheels. So make sure that you stay tuned for that. Make sure that you subscribe. Make sure that you click the all button down there to get notified whenever 11 Gallery ATV drops a new video, you will see it in your inbox when you click into YouTube, it'll say, hey, 11 Gallery ATV. 11 Gallery ATV has put out a new video, so yeah. Uh, so yeah, let's get, to, let's get all this stuff buttoned up. And then I did some riding today also. Uh, I finally took it out and opened it up a little bit. I got it uh, cranking through the gears, and I took it out by the highway and did some donuts, so we'll, <laughs> we'll show that. And yeah, I'm just waiting for it to cool down. And then we're going to have to come in and do this. Uh, actually, these are just mocked up for right now. I gotta go find my light, which we dropped somewhere. So let's get on the old, uh, let's get on the 400EX and go try to find that son of a bitch, cause uh, that's a, so yeah, where you've seen the last videos, you guys have already seen it run and you've seen me cruising around a little bit with the little makeshift gas tank and all that stuff hanging off the side and I got it all adjusted and ready to rock and roll with that thing. Guess what? This baby's done. Got a brand new petcock in there. Got a brand new uh, fuel line. The inside's been flushed. The outside's been painted. And uh, yeah, we even removed a dent. So let's get into that. But before we do that, this is the time where we announce the next build, so yeah. Uh, basically what I'm doing here is there's a couple projects that I have going on. One of them is going to be the full build for sure. It's a four-wheeler. That's what I'm going to tell you here coming on up. Uh, um, and I also have another project that I would like to tackle, but I'm just wondering if you guys have any interest in me posting the footage and uh, checking that out at all. So yeah, I have a couple, I have a couple projects. Uh, one of them is the full build for sure, and it's sitting right there. And we're gonna go over there in a second here and check it out. But I also have one sitting over here. That's uh, another project that I'm going to tackle regardless whether I post video footage or not. But I would just like to know if you guys would be interested in it. That's the idea of the first project I got going on. If you guys would even be interested in watching footage, let me know down there in the comments. Make sure that you uh, subscribe, ring the bell, get notified, all that good stuff coming up in 11 Gallery ATV. Uh, drops the new build videos. We're gonna be getting into that. Uh, it's gonna be just like the, it's gonna be just as detailed and extensive as the, four, as the 400EX and the 200X here that we're currently working on. Yeah, so, all right, let's get into the next projects. Here's what I picked up first. Check it out. Ooh this is a 2003 Kawasaki KX100. 
And I've already put bars on it because the little mini bars, <laughs> well, I'm an old guy. I'm not a little kid. So this is a junior style motocross bike and it's pretty quick, pretty goddamn quick. I'll throw a, there's me riding it. footage um, I really want to not really go into the motor on this one but I want to pull everything off get the frame powder coated get the new plastics get the seat redone I've already done the gas tank cap and uh, the the handlebars there so anyway what I want to do is I want to get new wheels we're gonna go for a blue hub wheel on here black rim blue hubs and we're going to take the frame and i haven't decided yet whether i want to go black or green or even i thought about doing the old school kawasaki purple a purple frame and then greening up all the accessories with some green and blue and pink going back to the old school getting the some graphics with pink on there and pink and purple go back to the 80s in the early 90s yeah so would you even be interested in watching uh, this build because we're actually gonna convert it into a trail bike as well so we're gonna we're gonna uh, put a weight on the flywheel so that we can control that power band a little bit easier out in the woods and out in the trails and stuff and yeah the power band right now is on or off you're either standing on it or you're doing nothing <laughs> that's the way the power band works you'll see when yeah, you saw when I wrote it that that's the way this thing works. But anyway, let me know if you have any desire to see that guy. But, here we go. This could be in the future if you guys are, uh, if you guys want to see it done. Anyway, let me know in the comments for sure. Let me know down there. So make sure you subscribe. Uh, make sure that you click that all bell to get notified uh, whenever 11 Gallery ATV puts out new videos you'll have that in your inbox when you come into YouTube you'll see it and yeah anyway let's get on down to the next build for for reals look at that folks this is our next build that folks is a 2006 Yamaha YFZ 450 Woo! don't get it confused for the 450 R this is just a plain old 450, carbureted. Yeah. But, it looks nice, doesn't it? But it's not. <laughs> I got it cheap because I got this uh, guy with another one. Boom! I also have a 2005 that I bought these at Pear. And I thought, 
that I would be interchanging parts. Yeah, that is not the case. <laughs> that is not the case at all. None of this stuff works. Maybe the seat <laughs> and the plastics are the same. And you know, I can, I can still swap a few pieces. Like this one has nicer handlebars. Like this one has some aftermarket handlebars on it that we can crank on over there. And uh, the plastics seem to be a little bit nicer. And I think they're preserved by these crappy graphics that someone put on there, but we can get the graphics off and get this guy ready to rock. Well, it's got better foot pegs. It's got some fat pegs on it. Uh, it looks like they belonged to some Nerf bars, but the pegs themselves are way better, so we're going to use those. And uh, once again, back to what I was trying to explain. Um, what I didn't know before I bought these is that there is total difference between the 2005 and the 2006. The 2006 model, which is this guy right here, they changed everything. Uh, updated the swing arm to the, the new style, uh, so it's adjustable. Back there, see, you can adjust the chain. This thing came with the 400EX and the uh, 200X we've been building, and the motor, is totally different. The only thing the same on this guy right here is the cylinder itself. The head is different, the crankcases are different, and everything. And the reason why I'm explaining that is because, and well, there it goes, there goes your learning experience right away. Uh, I did not know this, but the 2006 through 2009 carbureted quads are the same and then the 2012 and 13 also have a carbureted version and they are all interchangeable almost the cylinder head is different on the 12 and 13 uh, but yeah we're gonna get into this guy and we're gonna get this guy running because the reason why I got these so cheap is because that one the 2006 that we're building they said it wasn't locked up but guess what they got me it's locked up but it's okay because you know what? When I bought it, I paid the price uh, that I was happy with considering that I thought it was locked up myself anyway. So I bought it knowing that it probably was locked up and they were lying to me. And it's cool because we're gonna be uh, cranking this whole baby down anyhow. We're gonna build it just like we did the 400DX. Boom. If you wanna watch uh, the 400DX build, we're gonna strip this whole motor down and we are going to replace every single bearing every single everything and here's a, another reason why uh, this is a good deal for me and we're both happy because they got a decent price for both of these I'm not going to tell you what it is but so I did okay and what we're going to do what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the cylinder I'm going to take the cylinder off of this one and I'm going to put it in place because here's this one. This one's whoo. We're gonna put the cylinder here because look at that. We're broke. That thing is all trashed up. And what somebody did was this thing has been beat to crap. It's not locked up though. This one's not locked up. Yeah. Somebody wrapped that in there and the crankcase down there is broken and not usable so we're gonna need a new left crankcase half and we're gonna need a new cylinder which we have the cylinder off the 2006 over there and I'm gonna buy a brand new cylinder uh, for that one for our build so we may throw some videos up of me doing a little bit to this guy I haven't decided yet but Oh, I don't know. There's a whole bunch of things. What do you think I should do? Drop your comments down there and let me know what you think I should do with this 2005 because the other option is to... It's titled. I got the title for... That's another good reason why I got both of these. Both of them had a title. And uh, they're both clean and I already have them in my name. So they're not bullshitting there. <laughs> they didn't get me on that. So technically, the other thing that I could do with this right here is I could strip it for parts and sell the titled frame 
Uh, if anybody be interested in that, let me know also. I mean, what do you think I should do? What is your opinion? Do you think I? Do you think it's uh, worth me trying to rebuild that motor and put back together this 2005 to get it running to sell, or do you think I'd be better off stripping it and uh, selling the titled frame and then selling all the parts after that? Um, hmm. Yeah, I don't really know what to do with that. But anyway, this is our next build. So after we finish this guy right here, this 2000... 2000... <laughs> after we finish this 1986 Honda ATC 200X, we're going to be building a 2006 Yamaha YFZ450. Oh yeah, and back, don't get it mixed up with a 450R. The 450R didn't start until 2009 and uh, they are fuel injected and they got a different frame so that's another thing make sure the EFI version if you're building a carbureted version like this make sure you don't go try to find any motor pieces the oh, there's a couple few but do your research do your research before you go about buying things like I'm kind of stoked I'm kind of ready to get this guy going. We got to finish this guy up though first. So yeah, so let's jump on into it. And let's get this uh, this guy put up and ready to go for when it starts to cool down. Because, well, check it out. I, I can't show you, but my camera already has a warning on it. I've only been the, the length of this video right here with me talking is how long it took for this camera to overheat out here because once again look at that folks yes that is the temperature and it's only like 10 o'clock in the morning and around three four o'clock this thing will be up towards the 120 so yeah so it's hot and it's getting hotter again i can't wait for it to cool down here in phoenix this is riding weather here in the next month or two it's gonna be beautiful. Uh, anyway, so let's get on down to the gas tank and the carburetor and get all this stuff buttoned up and fired up again and take this baby for a for a real ride this time. So yeah. All right. Woo. So we're gonna go ahead and get this tank. As you can see, uh, it was chemically stripped of all the paint by Express Metal Cleaning. Yeah, they're the ones that did the motor uh, before it was vapor blasted. So what they, you know, I took it there, they chemically stripped everything, and then I have went over it with a wire wheel and got everything beautiful and uh, perfect and removed all the film. And so, yeah, now we're ready to go. Now we got a bare metal tank, and first thing we need to do, we got a little dent here but we're gonna fill this one. And we got this dent. So we're gonna try this dent puller. This was a El Cheapo kit that I bought for 50 bucks. And it comes with a bunch of different things and we're gonna try this one first. It looks like we should be able to use this guy. We got a whole bunch of assembly, a whole bunch of pieces here. But it looks like we should be able to use this one because it's got these, uh, these little raised things where it's gonna sit inside the dent. So anyway, what we're gonna do is they're gonna hot glue this guy right in there. And it's gonna sit in there. And then we're gonna hook it up to this guy and we're just gonna pull. And hopefully it pulls that dent right on out. And you start with a big attachment. We might have to do this a couple times, but we'll see what happens. I've never pulled a dent like this, so we'll give it a whirl. Anyway, we got ourselves uh, some hot glue and the glue gun says we only need to heat this thing up for three to five minutes. So let's get this baby started. We'll just load it on in there, turn it on. And three to five minutes later, we should have some hot glue. Not yet, sirs, I got carried away. It's only been like 30 seconds. <laughs> I can't wait. Whoa, hey. All right, we got glue already. So let's, uh, let's glue this sucker on down. It 
And it says to hurry up, so we need to hurry up. All right, and then we'll just plunk that sucker right down on into there. And it says we only need to wait three to five minutes for this dog, so let's see what happens. All right, it's been long enough, let's see what happens. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to find a place to rest this thing. I think I'm gonna try here and here, or either that or here or here. Let's see. I think this is, this is longer. So we'll go here and here. Nah, we'll go here and here. That way it'll pop this thing out better. So we're gonna try to snag that. Well, it totally looks like we're gonna have to go farther in. Okay, we got that hooked up. Now let's get her tight, and then we can do nothing. Now, all right. Well, that didn't seem to do a goddamn thing. So let's uh, try more glue, and I'm gonna go for a smaller one of these, so we can get. Instead of it being out here, maybe we can get in the center of this thing. Let's try one of these. Maybe this guy will go in there better. And it has uh, little holes, so maybe that will penetrate better. Penetrate better. <laughs> Let's try cleaning that up with a little bit of acetone. Before we do this next one, maybe it'll stick better. All right, let's give it a whirl. And we'll stick that right in there. Now this time I'm gonna wait a little longer. Last time I think it was probably like maybe three, four minutes or so. I'm gonna give this thing a little bit longer to set up, maybe six, 10 minutes. We'll give that a, a whirl and see what happens. So it's been about 12 minutes. Let's see if the glue set up better and let's see if we can't crank this off. I'm gonna go from the top this time and I'm gonna hook it here and here and see if we can't pull it out this direction. Kinda like so, so that it's not on the dent, it's up on the ridge and we'll see what happens. Ooh, it's coming. It wants to come. Hey, I think I got some of it out. Let's crank it down a bit. All right. Well, that got a little bit of it out. So now I can see, since it was right here, I need to put it like right about here I think I'm gonna have to give it one of these shots this way. With a, I'm gonna put a small one right there in the center and see if I can't pluck that thing out. If I try one of this, this little tiny one, maybe I can uh, get it to come out. All right, now I'll be waiting again. <laughs> Come on, man, get this dent out. I could put something inside of here and try to punch it out from that way, but I don't have anything and I don't want to ruin the lip because it's beautiful. I don't want to ruin that. So I'm just gonna try this until I get it done. All right, folks, let's give it another rip and see if we can't get this baby to pop on out. And I'm gonna try it from a different angle this time. I'm going to try it. I'm gonna have to crank it down a bit. There we go. I want it to be right on the corner. Ooh, that's not bad. Now I'm gonna just give it a crank. Oh, look at that, folks. Woo! Wow. That one is what you do. No more of that goddamn feather just crank it. That thing popped right out. There's a little low spot right there and a little low spot right there. Or maybe that's high. 
I don't know, I'll have to check the other side. Either way, it doesn't matter because we can crank that back down. Nope, it's not too high. That's perfect right there. That's what it's supposed to do. So we got a, we got a little dent right here and a little dent right, a little tiny one right here. And I'm just gonna get, this one, this one could be filled, but I'm gonna try that one more time. I'm gonna put one here and one here. We'll see if we can't uh, get these dogs on out of there. This one down here, I think we're gonna just use some body filler on it. It's not super bad. I need to get this one out though. I'm using some acetone here just to clean up that spot to get a good, uh, let the glue stick better. All right, what size, peoples? Should we try this one? I think that's a little too big. That's what she said. Woo! To me. <laughs> no, anyway. Uh, anyway, let's, maybe we'll try that one. I think it will stick in there. It's got a kind of a raised, uh, so it'll go right inside of the dent right there. All right, one more try. All right, let's let it dry and come back and smack that thing one more time. If it doesn't come out this time, I'm not going to push it. And we're just going to fill it with some body filler and be done. Because we got the major part out. Uh, here we go. Hopefully this dent pops on out of there. And all right, let's see what happens. Let's, uh, I think we're going to put it like right this direction this time. And maybe pull out this way. So let's see if we can get it hooked up right about there and get this foot off of the dent. Let's see if we can get that thing to stay right there. All right, here we go. Yeah, look at that. We got the dent out. Still a tiny little bit of low spot right here. That's the key. The key is to make sure I wipe it down with the acetone to get that glue to stick nice. Cause that thing, uh, that thing didn't pop off for a couple of pulls. Let's wipe it down with some acetone and see what we got. Look at that folks. That's way better than it was. There's one low spot right there and one low spot right there, but it is barely, barely there. I think I might push it and try to pop this one out right here. There's a little bit right there. All right, let's glue this dog up one last time. And let's get it right here. All right, this thing works awesome. So this is some weird brand called uh, like you he <laughs> So it's a you he you he uh, this is definitely a Chinese dealio because the uh, the glue gun has Chinese writing on it so they're definitely not disguising that but it works. I'm pretty impressed with it to tell you the truth. We didn't drill any holes we didn't do anything man. We got this whole dent out with a little low spot here, a little low spot here. This one's a little lower. We're gonna do this one last time. And other than that, man, I'm a, I'm super happy with that. All right, let's wait another 15 minutes and then we'll crack this dog on out of there. All right, peoples, here we go, final pull. Cause no matter what happens, I'm not doing this again. I'm gonna fill it if it doesn't come out. So let's get it up there onto the, ooh, yeah. We got her up there good. Ooh, I can see it coming out. Yeah. Whoo, it popped a little bit more. So that's it. There's nothing I can, that's just barely down now. And there's a little low spot here and a little low spot here, but they're not, uh, I think I risk pulling it out too far if I, if I do anymore.
So yeah, that worked awesome. I am super stoked about this thing. Um, I would highly recommend trying it out. It's rather cheap and yeah, it worked out pretty goddamn nice. Anyway, so let's we're gonna sand it down now and we'll figure out where we are from there. So yeah, let's move on to the next step and get this baby sanded down and get ready for some body filler. And then we can throw some paint on this dog and get a ripping. Woo! All right, let's do it. All right, now we're out in the garage. We can get this dog sanded down and I've already started right here. And what I'm doing is I'm using a 320 to do the whole thing because that's what the uh, etching primer is gonna stick to. But we're gonna have to apply some body filler in a few little places. So we're gonna have to uh, hit some of this with some lower grit uh, paper. But let's get the whole thing sanded first and get it ready for the etching primer and then we can do the body work. And since I'm doing this dry, every once in a while we're gonna have to uh, air off. And of course, while you're sanding, you wanna have uh, some respiratory, uh, you know, apparatus going, so... Nope, I am your father. <laughs> Alright, let's, let's get this thing rolling. And I am not sure where all these scratches came from because they were not there. In the paint. I don't know what the hell that's from. Alright, folks. I think we're getting ready for some body filler, so let's go ahead and uh, I'm gonna finish up the rest of this and then we'll get on back to, we'll get on down to the body filler. All right, now right here's where our dent was. You can still see a little low spot here, a low spot here, and a little low spot there. But we're gonna use some body filler, so we're gonna use some 80 grit right here. And it looks like we need some like all along there too. All right, we're gonna have to get this tank sealed up. And I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. I don't think I need to be recording all this.
All right, folks, now that we got the white down, uh, we can go ahead and put the graphic on. While it's still a tiny, tiny, tiny bit tacky, it's been drying for probably oh, a good uh, four hours or so. I also have this graphic, and I haven't decided whether I want to even put it on there or not, because I kind of like it without it. But if we're going to put it on there, we should probably put this one on first. All right, so I did decide that I'm going to apply this graphic right here. And I do things a bit differently than most people. Some people take a whole lot of time and measure and spending a bunch of time, but these graphics from the factory were not perfectly centered either. So I'm just going to eyeball it and get it done because, well, I can spend my time doing other stuff that way. <laughs> but anyway, I'm also pretty good at uh, centering stuff. But anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit it with some, uh, some glass cleaner to get all of the wax and whatever happens to be on there off now we're just going to peel back the uh the back like that and since this tank is curved this way i'm going to start on this side and i'm going to fold it this way basically but we're going to line it up first so we want it to be right about uh right like Like so. There we are, one graphic. See, that's why I don't uh, measure or do anything crazy. That is pretty nicely centered right there. And I just did that with my eyeballs. You just witnessed it, five seconds, I just dumped that thing down on there and away we go. So, let's get these uh, side graphics on and we'll decide I might not uh, do the clear coat. All right, next up we're gonna put the right side graphic on. And I've looked at all the pictures and decided that the way this goes is the top of this flag right here, this, this top of this wings, goes right about here. And the A, the bottom of the A down here, goes right about in here. And the Honda is leveled right about at this mark right here. So it's not in line with this. And it's not in line with this. It's kind of staggering, like teetering, right about like that. So it's gonna go right about uh, in here. So let's get our glass cleaner. Okay, now And there we go, one graphic. On the right side applied, let's go ahead and get the left side down. And uh, first step is gonna be our glass cleaner. All right, now we're gonna stick this guy right about, uh, right like so.
All right, there we are. Woo, she looks beautiful. Oh yeah, it's a nice hot day in Phoenix. About 105, I'm gonna go jump in the pool here in a second. But first, what? Look at the gas tank. Look at that. Our gas tank. What? Look at that beautiful son of a bitch. It's coming together. All right, we'll check it out. Uh, I found a use for the mask. Yeah, that uh, liner that's on there is going to work perfect as a strainer. So I just ripped the, the uh, liner out and look at that, it's like a little screen. I'm gonna pour this evapo rust that was in the gas tank back into the bottle so we can use it for other stuff because this is not a one-time use and this stuff is expensive. And uh, yeah, so this is gonna be perfect. And then we have this thing flushed right now with some isopropyl alcohol, 99%. We got this stuff right here. Some isopropyl alcohol, 99%. And we are flushing out the tank with that after we got the rust, evapo rust going. So let's go to the gas station and get some gas, shall we? with my garage door opener. All right, we got the gas can strapped on. Didn't go nowhere. Oh yeah. You guys probably recognize this beast right here. This is the last build. So it's just fitting that we're gonna use the last build to finish up the current build and then we're gonna build that guy right back there yes indeedy It's dicey. folks we made it no problems with uh, the 
just going right down to the local gas station and getting myself some gas. Woo! All right, let's get this gas tank up on this dog right here. All right, that guy agrees with his uh, exhaust. All right, let's get it done. Woo! All right, folks, check it out. The uh, we're draining the gas tank here after we did the evapo rust and. Yeah, now we're using isopropyl alcohol, 99%. And look, it's getting clear. We're almost ready for some gasoline in this thing. And look, at that's what it started out with. We rinsed the rust out with uh, the alcohol. And this is the second alcohol run. And yeah, she's looking pretty good. All right, folks, let's get our last two bottles of isopropyl alcohol in here. All right, there you go. This is about our third, this is our fourth flush now. Uh, we're going to use the last two bottles of the 99% isopropyl alcohol. Drain it out and then we'll put the gas in it and we'll go. And you definitely want to use a funnel here because this stuff will wreck your paint. I already dripped some on here and there's two little splotches where it ate through the paint. So, well, that sucks. Yeah. God damn it. No. No, no, I fucking ate the paint. Well, that's why you don't want to drip on the paint. That sucks. Wouldn't you know it, on camera, I hit the paint. I did everything without touching it. And now the one time when I put it on camera, I eat the paint away. What is happening? This is the worst. I just got more on there. Come on. All right, well, that was about the worst outcome that could have happened. All right, let's slosh it around a bit. All right, now let's drain a little bit. It's looking pretty clear, looking pretty clear. So let's turn it off and uh, pop this, pop the petcock <laughs> right off of there. And let's see if we're clear. Look at that folks, crystal clear. All right, so this is the last rinse of the isopropyl alcohol. Remember this is 99% isopropyl alcohol, so we get all of that uh, evapo rust and water out of there. And yeah, we can leave a little bit, we're gonna have to leave a little bit of this alcohol in there. And that's okay, it'll mix with the gas, it'll sink to the bottom, it'll mix with the water, and it will go right through the system. And then we'll burn a couple of tanks off, and yeah, good to go. Get as much as we can out of here in the last run, and then we'll add the, the fuel and we'll be good to go. All right, folks, now that we got that uh, flushed out and we're ready to dump some gas in there, we're gonna need one thing. We need our brand new OEM Petcock. Look at that, brand spanking new with the brand spanking new uh, filter on there so let's get that baby installed and then we'll fill this up with gas and the remaining part of the alcohol that's still in there what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this sit overnight with a full tank of gas and then that alcohol will absorb all the water and sink to the bottom and then what we'll do is we will drain out some of the gas tomorrow uh, and fill it back up again. And then we should have mostly gas in there. A little bit of alcohol is not gonna hurt anything anyway. We'll run a couple of tanks through and that'll, that'll disappear. So let's get this petcock installed and get this baby filled up with gas and then come back tomorrow. All right, so the petcock's gonna go right here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply a little bit of blue Loctite on there. Dab on the threads there. And we might as well spill it on the paint because we got everything else wrecked on the paint anyway so might as well wreck this too <laughs> i don't know if the red locker wrecks the paint or not but probably does seeing how i touched it obviously what we're going to want to do is face this guy out 
We don't want any of that uh, thread locker on here, so we got to be very careful. This nut right here is a 22, 22 millimeter. So then we'll just hold that baby on out there like so. What you want to do, which I didn't do, is you want to line up this with the, the same angle. I have mine facing in like this a little bit, so we're going to have to loosen it up and give that another shot. So that's about where we want it, right there. We're going to put it down here. And then the last turn, there we go. Now we're just going to crank it down. There we go. Right where we want it. And now, of course, we're going to fill it up with gas. We want to make sure that this is off. And it is. So hopefully, <laughs> it works. This is brand new OEM, so I'm just going to assume that it works. I hope it does. Let's get that secured on there. There we go. All right, let's get that uh, filled up with gas. And yes, that is sitting on two pairs of underwear. <laughs> By the way, uh, uh, you know, you get skivvies and then you got to repurpose your underwear as rags. That's what I did. All right, let's, so let's try not to spill any gas on this gas tank and wreck any more of the paint which we already did a lot, look at that. I'm gonna have to try to figure out some way to hit that again, or just leave it, because, well, this is gonna be a rider, so the inside is much more important than the outside, but it looked nice for a minute. Anyway, let's get some gas in there and come back tomorrow, drain the bottom out. Some gas. God damn it. Man, this is taking forever. I'm half tempted to just take that off and pour it. Well, this is a dumb idea, but I'm gonna do it anyway, because, well, that's the way I roll. <clears throat> Let's see what happens if I pour it. Do spill it. Now that we got gas on everything, what are you gonna do? I'm not gonna wipe it this time because it seems like when I wiped that off last time, when I got the alcohol on it, it came off. But when I let it be, it seemed to just drive back to normal again. So hopefully we'll just see what happens with this gas. <laughs> it is what it is. That was taking too long. And I wanna ride this thing. I don't wanna be baby in it. So I guess that's where we are. All right, so check it out, folks. We are full, all the way to the top. Now we're gonna put the lid on here, the cap on, so nothing gets in there. We're gonna we're gonna leave that till tomorrow, and then this alcohol that was in there, this leftover isopropyl, 90, 99 percent isopropyl alcohol, will fall to the bottom and snag any water that's down there mix with it and then tomorrow we'll come back and we'll open this up let's make sure that it works see if we can't get a little bit out of here and see what it looks like well it flows pretty nice there's what our gas looks like so it flows and it looks pretty uh looks pretty clear so once again we'll let that sit overnight and then we'll come back and we'll drain the rep we'll drain uh, a lot of it out of the bottom and then we'll fill it back up again man see look at that that sucks well, let's just make sure this this cap comes off and it's not sticking to it uh, I think it'll come off yeah, that seemed to work fine I think it'll be all right Gas seems to be a little less uh, paint eating than isopropyl alcohol. So in case you wanted to know that, at least there's that. I tested both. <laughs> I tested both for you. So, you know, 
Gasoline is better for your paint than isopropyl, 99% isopropyl alcohol. So there you go. All right, let's close this dog up and come back tomorrow. The next day. All right, folks, we let this sit overnight and hopefully it does what I thought it was supposed to do. And uh, it sounds logical, but I don't know if any of this is true or not. But all the research I did says that the alcohol falls to the bottom, mixes with the water. It's been sitting overnight, so hopefully all of it should be at the bottom right now. So let's drain out some of this before we uh, start going to town. It's flowing pretty nice with the brand new petcock on there, so you would expect it to. A fuel filter seems to be doing its job pretty good too. Look at that, it looks pretty nice. All right, well I say that's probably plenty uh, that we're going to waste. All right, look at that. That is clean, 91 octane out of the pump. That's why it's yellow, like that, the yellowish tint. Mid-grades get a yellow. The high-performance stuff is usually pink, and then the regular is like greenish or bluish. So, we're in the middle, good enough. Looks good, let's get this tank on. Let's get this tank mounted and fired up again. All right, folks, next step we're gonna do before we put the tank on is, check it out. There's the diagram, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut ourselves uh, one of these right here because you can't buy this any longer, but you can buy the 4.5 diameter by 80, actually by 3,000 millimeters long uh, tube. So we're gonna have to cut it, and the OEM diagrams and manuals say that this baby right here is 80 millimeters long. So we're gonna take us, uh, little chunk of that and we're gonna cut us cut us off of 4.5 by 80 and then we have the two brand new clips that are gonna go on both sides of it the one for the gas tank and one for the carburetor and then we have these guys you can't buy these anymore this is the rubber grommet that goes into the tank and then this goes down all the way in there like so and then the bolt will go through like that and it will go into the frame and hold the gas tank down. Couldn't buy either one of these. So luckily we had that, but uh, the bolt looks a little corroded and stuff and a little rusty. So I got two brand new bolts right there. They do, they do sell those still, OEM. So yeah, here's our little pieces. So let's get this tube cut and get the tank mounted. Fire this dog up again and ride it for reals without that stupid little uh, makeshift little tiny gas tank on there that flapped around in the wind and hopefully it'll run better too so let's get this cut so here's our 3000 uh length <laughs> hose that we don't need that much we only need 80 but these also go on the carburetor and these are, this is used for other stuff too so so we'll just get some of that 80 millimeters long and it doesn't have to be perfect obviously so we'll just mark it right about there and then we'll just use the old uh the old home scissors because it makes a nice even clean cut and there we go one fuel line 80 millimeters long ready to be bolted on and ready to rock and roll so let's get this done next step we're going to do is these guys are pretty old and they're still rubbery, they're still kind of nice, but in order to preserve them, we're gonna hit them with a little bit of the maximum waterproof grease to keep them moisturized and preserved, and especially inside of here, where it goes, this is where it's gonna slide into the tank metal, and it's gonna fit in the hole there, and then this is you know where it's gonna keep it secure. So we're gonna hit this with some grease before we put it in there, and the reason why I'm doing this in the house is because it's 100 and 10 degrees outside so we got to film everything in here uh well it's air conditioned before we go outside and install these dogs so let's get it done this will also help them slide into place much easier as well all right there's that one All right, 
And then what we're going to do is we're going to hit the insides of these as well because these are going to drop down inside the rubber grommet. And we want this inside to be uh, greased up nice because look, you can see it's all pitted from rust and I uh, had to wire wheel all that off and they were seized up in there pretty good. So once it got it cleaned up though, we want to keep it like that. So let's get a nice layer of grease on here too. That'll keep it from seizing up inside the rubber. And we're not going to drop it through the rubber yet because we want to put the rubber inside of the tank uh, holes first and then we'll drop these in and then we'll install it. All right. And then the one more thing we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit of uh, the grease right on just the part of the bolt that doesn't have any threads because that's the part that's going to uh, sit inside of that metal collar. And we don't want it to seize up there. We could use anti-seize here, but I already got the waterproof grease and it's going to work just fine in this situation. So we want to get it on there. And the other one. All right, now we can take it outside and go out into the heat and install these uh, into the tank. And then we'll let the cool, then we'll let the camera cool down and then put the tank on. All right, folks, check it out. Uh, now, we're going to install the rubber grommets into the gas tank and they go with the thicker side down because this is where this guy is going to come down through this is going to come out the top of here and this is where it's going to sit on the frame so yeah so let's get those babies up in there There you go, there's one. See how much easier that was with the grease around it? So much better. There you go. And now these guys just go straight down through. And well, we got everything else on the paint. So one more thing, grease doesn't seem to hurt the paint at all. <laughs> so what have we learned in any of this, at least is that 99% uh, isopropyl alcohol, bad for the paint. Gasoline, bad for the paint also, but not as bad as 99% isopropyl alcohol. Waterproof grease, doesn't hurt the paint. So yeah, we learned what we can get on the paint and what we can't anyway, so whoo, all right. And then these babies will just go on in here. And then they'll hook to the frame. All right, folks, as long as we're down here, let's just change out this uh, vent tube that we had for flushing purposes and put the real one on there. Get rid of that. And we have this uh, elbow racing fat tube that should allow plenty of venting for the gas tank. And we got our clip on there. Oh yeah, look at that. There we go, and this will drop into the little hole in the handlebars. And match our paint scheme, of course. Woo! All right, let's get this baby installed. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna line the, these two grommets up right here. Got them greased up with the maximum waterproof grease. And yeah, so the tank's gonna fit on here first. So the two little slots in the front of the gas tank are gonna slide into these grommets right here just like the seat does. This, this is gonna slide right into these, and then the bolts are gonna go into these two little holes right here, and that's the stuff we just installed. So yeah, let's get this baby hooked up in there. Okay. So we get that out of the way. Ow! This is different when it's full of gas. And then what you wanna do is this little, these little slots, boom, they go in there. And then it makes it easier to maneuver with that grease on there too. And then we just find the holes down here. There's one. 
We'll just snug these babies down. There we go. Since I got the rubber grommet on it, I believe that would make for a nice little lock washer. Now the fuel vent that comes off the cap that we just put on, it goes right down in here. And then we look just like so. Beautiful. And that's all there is to that. Now our tank is installed. Oh, we gotta put our, uh, we gotta put our air scoops back on. All right, folks, we got the air scoops on. I didn't record this because, I mean, this is no longer stock anymore anyway. All it is is two bolts right here. But what I did was I had to drill them myself because they're Meyer plastics. And you gotta drill them yourself and they're a pain in the ass. And yeah, so what I did was I mounted, oh yeah, they don't even give you that little plug in the back that plugs into the gas tank that has a little rubber grommet on it that keeps it from, from rattling. They uh, didn't even supply that at all. It's not even on this, so it's only two holes right there, that's it. And what I did was I had some O-rings that were thick and I cut them in half so they fit around the, the, the uh, bolt hole in the back there, so I got a rubber grommet behind both of these bolts also. And I had some cool Allen screws that I had and some nice washers, so yeah, made it look pretty cool. Looks awesome, now we can get that uh, fuel line hooked up and go to town here. And look at that, I got the graphics on too. You can see the 200X graphics on the rear fenders back there. Oh yeah. And the 200X on the front fender right there. And as long as we got the rear fenders off, check it out. Got the Showa sticker back there on the swing arm, because we got the Showa shock right there, of course, and then the Schmitty Racing Suspensions sticker. They were so kind enough to supply me when I asked for them, because I rebuilt the the, uh, the whole rear shock back here with the Schmitty Racing uh, Suspensions seal kit. And yeah, they were cool. All I did was I uh, wrote them a letter and I said, hey, I. Uh, I want to display your name on my shop canister and I didn't get any stickers when I bought the uh, kit. Can you send me some stickers? And they sent me all kinds of sizes for nothing, for free. She said, sure, give me your address. Boom, sent me some stickers. Shout out to Schmitty Racing Suspensions right there for this badass uh, bling going on. That thing's, the shock is badass too. So. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. Please make sure that you subscribe and uh, click that all. And you get notified whenever 11 Gallery ATV is putting out new videos. And we're getting ready to, we're getting ready to build that guy. Oh yeah. We're wrapping this one up here for right now. And we're gonna come back to it in the middle of this build, probably. But we're gonna start tearing this guy down pretty soon. This is a 2006 YFZ 450R. We're gonna be tearing this guy down and going all the way down to the frame, just like we did uh, the rest of these builds. So yeah, you wanna make sure that you subscribe and make sure that you uh, click the all button so that you get notified. Whenever you come to YouTube, boom, you'll see 11 Gallery ATVs dropped a new one. We're getting back into this. This is exciting. Uh, yeah, so let's get this baby wrapped up. Let's get this, uh, fuel line on there and then once we get the fuel line on there I already rebuilt the carburetor but I never really showed the footage of that so uh, we're gonna jump into rebuilding this carburetor too and then it will make more sense if you watched the first start uh, I said that the the float bowl was leaking and I replaced it with the Chinese one we had from before but it didn't make any sense because I never showed the rebuild and I was, we'll get into that this is the OEM carburetor but it has a Chinese carburetor float bowl on it because the float bowl from this OEM carburetor leaked big time. And I luckily had that and I bought it just for the gasket. But we'll get into that as well. All right, folks, check it out. Before we uh, rebuild the carburetor, you need air and fuel for the carburetor. We already got the fuel. So let us uh, check this out. I'm not gonna go into video, like in depth video, but just to let you know what we're rolling here. Since we're all stock, we got the 112 main, everything is stock and everything is jetted stock. We, we put the lid 
on the, the uh, air filter here on the air box. And look at that, we got us a brand new uni filter that's all hooked up and all greased up. I guess it would probably read better if we did it this way. Check it out, a brand new uni filter. So that's what we're rolling. We're rolling the airbox lid on. We're rolling stock jets, all the stock jetting. We're rolling stock exhaust. So this baby is just like brand new factory, better than factory. We stripped the paint off of that motor and woo. Yeah. So there we go. We just clip these on. And there we go. Let's get this carburetor rebuilt and get the fuel line on. Well, we got the carburetor in the ultrasonic cleaner right here. And uh, we're going to have to do a couple, couple runs at it because it doesn't quite fit all the way in there. So. All right, folks, check it out. We got our carburetor out of the ultrasonic cleaner, and it looks way better. Look at that son of a bitch right there. Woo! -hoo. All right. So, uh, we're going to take it apart real fast and get everything dried out and um, get it back together. We got us a, a rebuild kit. Got us some brand new uh, float bowl screws from Honda. So, we'll get these out. Doesn't matter if we strip them or what happens to them. Uh, you know what? We're going to try to keep them nice because we'll save them. So yeah, we got us a shindy kit. And as you can see, this is for the ATC 8687 Honda ATC 200X. So hopefully everything is right. And shindy is a pretty good brand and they're made in Japan. So yeah, cool. So let's get this. Uh, you can see we got a whole bunch of stuff going on. And that's really cool because our needle is bent anyway the original so this happens to have another needle in there thank god the kit has a new needle so let's get this part we'll just break them all first to make sure they all crack not bad somebody didn't go crazy on this car Woo! look at that all right so somebody didn't go crazy on this carburetor thank god Look at that. So, not too bad. We're going to put this stuff back through the ultrasonic cleaner again. I just wanted to have a nice, fresh thing to work with, but we're going to have to clean that out. It's not bad, though. The gasket is uh, trash. But thank God there's another gasket in there. So, All right, let's just pull this gasket. Wow. Easier said than done. That thing is, uh, whoa. Wow. Like ACDC said, hard as a rock. All right. So there we go. I just got it started. It looks like. Wow. Look at that. Just chunks. Come on, don't stop there. Keep going, son. All right. There we go. Yes. All right. So we can put this through the ultrasonic cleaner and um, get that gasket surface cleaned up. And we got a new one, thank God, because that was pretty trashed up. All right. Let's get this baby on off of here and see what it looks like. Ooh, good thing we did that, because there's an O-ring right there. We have a new one of those, too, and that thing is, uh, crusty. Oh, my gosh. I don't know how we're going to get that out of there without stabbing myself. That thing is hard as a rock. Ooh, I think it moved. There we go. Look at that. It doesn't even move. That's been there since 1986, I'm guessing. So it's a good thing we did all this, because 
Yeah, this is gonna look nice now. We're gonna get all this cleaned up. So back to the ultrasonic cleaner. All right, so we can uh, hopefully get that float pin out of there. There we go. There's nothing in the float, that's good, because we already had this submerged in the ultrasonic cleaner and in full water, so nothing in there, that's good. This guy's really hard though. Woo, that's what she said, boom. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, that thing, that thing is uh, pretty much trash, so definitely we got a new one of these, I hope. Yes, sir. There is one in there. All right, folks. Next, we're going to get out our, our pilot screw and our main jet, and um, we're going to compare it to the one we have in our shindy kit. Our shindy kit looks like this. This is all the stuff we have in our beautiful shindy kit. And in our shindy kit, we have a 35 on the pilot and a 112 on the main. So let's see what we got in here. All right, so before we take the pilot out, let's turn it in and see uh, where it is. You know what? I don't think we're gonna do that. It barely moves. Let's just get that out of there. And we'll go stock and we'll adjust it from there because it looks pretty trashed. Oh no, there it goes. I think it was all the way in. You can tell that whoever adjusted this thing a couple of times has used uh, pliers or vice grips or something on it because it's pretty mangled. That's pretty trashed up. I can't get the spring out. Uh oh. It's just getting caught on the uh I got a I got a little trick up my sleeve for that. Alright! So I have this little piece right here that I've made just for this occasion that I use just for uh it goes right through there, it'll go through the spring, and then I can hook one side and suck it on back out again. That's the plan, anyway. Well, that spring just does not want to come out of there. Let's come back to that. So let's remove the main jet and see what we got going on here. Well, we got all of it. We got the needle jet holder, too. Oh, uh, yeah, that looks uh, pretty gross down there. So it's a good thing we did that. We're going to have to get all this stuff in the ultrasonic cleaner. So let's uh, unhook these guys. Hmm, so this one's a seven. So our main, looks like it says 112. That's what we got here, right? 112. And we don't have another one of these, so we're gonna have to clean this guy up. We're gonna clean up all this stuff anyway. This we have a new one, but it's a different style. It doesn't quite look the same, so I don't know what we're gonna do there. Run it, I guess, and <laughs> find out what happens. <laughs> All right, so let's get to let's get the slow jet out. This one doesn't say what it is that I can see. Oh yeah, it does. It's a 35. And our slow here 
is also a 35. So that's cool. So they gave us the right ones there. All right, now let's get that uh, throttle stop out of there. Let's get the throttle screw out. We do have a new one of these also with a new spring. I can't figure out why that spring won't come out of there. There it is. See, I told you we just come back to it. Now there should be an O-ring in there too, shouldn't there? All right, folks, one more thing we need to do is since we have a new needle and a new adjuster, we need to get the old one out. And the way that works is you can see inside of here. I think you can see inside of there. Yeah. Check this out. You can see inside of there, there's a little, uh, a little U-shaped uh, clip that's in there and it's stuck on the, the two top walls here. So we're gonna try to use some uh, snap ring pliers to just snag that guy. Look at that. Well, there you go. That's easy enough, right? Pops right on out of there. And now this guy just comes right on up. And the clip just fell off by itself. So I don't even know what groove it was on. Damn it! That was my whole goal. I wanted to know what groove it's on. Because uh, when we put this back together, we're going to have to put this... Well, actually, we have a new needle. They are the same length. All right, so I totally forgot to remove this guy right here. We're going to get that guy out of there, and I don't even know what it is. <laughs> to tell you the truth... I looked in the manual and it ignored this uh, screw altogether. And it shows it in three different pictures. But it just went right around it and said, nah, I don't know. I'm not even going to touch it. It's just a drain or something. Because it goes right up to the edge of here. And it has an O-ring on it that is ruined. That thing is smashed to bits. But, there's an extra O-ring in the kit, and I imagine that's what this is for. So, let's get that O-ring off of there, because it's just junk. Just fell off into pieces. Alright, so we'll get that in the ultrasonic cleaner, and get that cleaned up. Put this back to the ultrasonic cleaner, that'll clean out this little, this little hole down here. And, and we'll, uh, get her done! Now we're going to start assembling this guy, yes sirs. All right, so let's get all this stuff into the ultrasonic cleaner, get everything cleaned up, and figure out where we are, and we'll come back and, yeah, get this baby assembled and rebuilt. Let's do it. All right, folks, now we got everything clean. Uh, everything's been run through the ultrasonic cleaner, and, yeah, you can see we have our awesome uh, body right here, and we got the, the float bowl all cleaned up, and... I wonder why this is a different color. I don't really know. Looks like it's painted. Looks like it's painted some kind of gray paint or something. And the float bowl is not painted. I kind of wish it all would have came off and it would have looked like this. But, you know what? So be it. But anyway, now I need to figure out what pieces we're going to use. And what pieces we are going to use out of the new kit. So, first off... Let us, uh, we're going to have to reuse this guy. We're going to have to use, reuse the, uh, the needle jet holder because we don't have one in the kit. So that's a good reason for that, right? <laughs> and we do have the needle jet though, but we're not going to use this either because I'd like to, but I cannot get the old one out. So it's not hindered in any way and you can see perfectly through it it looks beautiful so it's going to stay so while we're here let's just put our needle jet holder in there let's put the needle jet the main jet sorry let's put the main jet into the needle jet holder because that's where it's going to go oh yeah but we're going to use the new one so we're going to use the new one which is a 112 main jet and that's a 112 also the reason why I'm going to do this is because I can uh, assemble them much easier.
Just snug it. That's all we need. And now we can put these two pieces, the, uh, the needle jet holder and the main jet. And then it just gets bottomed out to the needle jet. And just snug it down. All right, now let's put back our pilot jet. And that's the one we had this uh, nasty pile of contraption here. And this is a 35, and we have a 35 in the kit that looks in much better condition, brand new. So we're gonna use that. And then just snug it down. All right, and now we're going to install our pilot screw, which is also the, you can call these things all kinds of different stuff, but really I guess this is the slow jet. This is the main jet. This is a fuel screw, fuel mixture screw. I have noticed that uh, I'm gonna have to reuse the old one because the new one is a different style altogether, and most importantly, it has different size threads. So, it doesn't screw into the body. So, we don't really have a choice. We have to reuse the old one. That kind of sucks, but you know, what you gonna do? Also, since this one's shorter, it's not quite, uh, it's not quite as long either. That's what she said, woo! <laughs> All right. So, yeah, we got a, a shorter spring, so we can't use that either. So, luckily I put all this stuff through the ultrasonic cleaner, so we're all good. And hopefully this will work, because we're going to have to put this guy back in again. But we are going to use the new little tiny, tiny minuscule washer. And the tiny little minuscule O-ring that came with the new kit, so that'll be good. Now we just drop that right back into the slot where it came from. But let's uh, do that upside down so we don't lose the washer and the O-ring off of the end. We're going to go back to the stock setting. So we're going to just bottom it out and then turn it back two turns. There we go. We're bottomed. We're bottomed out right there. So now we're going to go back one half, one, one half, two. And then we'll have to find adjust it, of course. Uh, all right, now let's put the float on. So we're going to use the new uh, float valve. So what you want to do here is you want to hook that guy on into the little slot right here. And then it just dangles. <laughs> and then it goes in there. And then we take this little pin and it doesn't look like it matters which direction it goes. It's a universal pin. So it just cruises on through. And that everything works like it's supposed to. Looking good there, all right. Now, let's assemble our pieces back onto this guy. So we got a couple things. We have uh, this little drain plug that came out of there. So I guess that's what I'm gonna call it because I still haven't figured out what that is, to tell you the truth, but it looks like if you uh, were to pop this out, it would just drain the bowl. Anyway, got some new O-rings, so let's go ahead and pop that baby on there. I think we're going to go across the other side, though, so we're going to have to go up over all of those uh, threads. Okay. 
There we go. One new O-ring. We're just going to put them back where he belongs. Get tightened up nice. And now we can uh, put on our bowl cap and it gets an O-ring as well. And of course we're just going to screw him on where he belongs. And we take our 14, 17, sorry. And just snug it up. Now with that new O-ring on there, that sits where it's supposed to be. Before it was all the way in there, now it sticks out a bit, which is kind of nice. And that's what it shows in the manual. All right. All right, now we can, uh... no, this is gonna be tricky. We're supposed to get a circle O-ring under that pile of contraption right there. So this is gonna be tricky. Well, how, how is that supposed to work? This is impossible. <laughs> there is no way, dude. There is no way that can work. I can't use the old one. The old one is a, uh, <laughs> like, freaking brick. Oh, I'm so pissed off, man. Well, all right, folks. This uh, circle O-ring gasket will never in a million years fit in there and stay. I have just ordered a new one, and uh, yeah. So, once again, we are f***ed by somebody else's decision to give me some crap. So here we are. Man, this is, uh, this is becoming the longest build in the history of mankind. Anyway, I thought Shindy was a reputable place, but I, t I see that this is the same number, 03009, and in the photo, it has a molded gasket, not a, not a circle gasket. So I imagine whoever sold me this kit right here, it looks like it's been laying around for a while, it looks like they realized that that is a bad gasket and pawned it off on somebody else, which is me. And I cannot return it, so... I bought this thing like six months ago. <laughs> I bought it as soon as I started this build. I knew I was going to have to rebuild the carb eventually, and I saw it sitting there for it was only 18 bucks. So anyway, I just found another one, and they raised the, the prices are a little higher now. So I bought another one for 20 So now this rebuild kit costs me $38 instead of 18 like it's supposed to. So anyway, there we are. We're going to come back to this uh, whenever we get going. One eternity later. Check it out. I got the mail today. This is the Shindy kit that I'm supposed to have. See the gasket? It is form fitted to fit in there. That is what I'm supposed to have instead of this stupid thing right here. You can see how this is going to work much better in that float bowl than this. <laughs> so somebody just screwed up at the packaging department and I didn't catch it. But uh, anyway, so we can move on. Now there's two different routes I can go. I got another kit also. I had another, I had another idea. Check this out. Just in case, look at this dog. What? Kwazaki. <laughs> I have no idea how to pronounce that. <laughs> Q-A-Z-A-K-Y. It's a Chinese knockoff of this carburetor. And what I figured was, I'm just going to figure out which one came first. They came at the same time, so... I'm gonna try one more thing with you guys, and we're gonna we're gonna try something here. So, the Kwasaki. Let's uh, unbox this guy. Oh, and I got it for another reason also. Uh, not for these. I don't know if you want to ever use those or not. I doubt. This is what else I got. This kit was less than twenty bucks. It was like eighteen dollars, and I got this. They even gave me some cleaners. Look at that. Some hose cleaners on the inside and stuff. And a, a fuel filter. So, what the hell? 20 bucks, huh? And, look at, here's what we got. And there's the Chinese knockoff. I did all the measurements in here. These are all the same. This is uh, 
27 millimeter right here this 35 or whatever it's supposed to be i can't remember what it is but it's exactly i think 35 this is the right size also supposedly but anyway i'm not going to use this for what i for what you think i'm going to use it for i'm using the oem one of course but check this out this is my this is my thinking let's see what we have underneath here so let's crack the bowl off of this thing All right, this is the moment of truth. This is what I wanted to see if we could use. Huh. This is what I wanted to see. Check this out. This has a gasket in it. Do you think we could use it? What the fuck? Look at that. This Chinese uh, knockoff has the same gasket, it looks like. So, does it fit? Look at that! Whoa! That's what I wanted to check. So look at that. If you really wanted to, you could get a whole carburetor for less than the price of this one gasket. This OEM gasket is $18 from Honda, right? That whole carburetor with the kit, with the fuel lines, with the cleaners, with the fuel filter, that all was $18 on Amazon. So, this is what I wanted to see. Now I got a whole extra carburetor body if I really need to use it. And I can transfer these jets into there. But this is all I wanted to do. We're going to use this. Because there is no sense in me opening this brand new kit just for the gasket. Alright folks, now that we got our new stuff. Um, yeah. So, let's get this baby together. We got one more thing that we need to put in. So yeah, we got the throttle stop screw. Oh, that's what Honda calls it. Idle screw. Um, yeah, whatever you want to call this thing. We need to put the idle idle screw back in there. It's going to go right here. And we'll just screw that thing down uh, until it bottoms out. And then, boom, we bottomed it out. So then we'll ro rotate it back a few screws here. There's one. Two. Three. Three is probably a good spot for it. Three and a half. All right. And now we got our gasket on here. Let's just go ahead and plunk that thing in there. All right. And now let's put our, uh, our float bowl back on. Boom, float bowl back on. And then we got our brand new bolts. Got our brand new OEM Honda float bowl screws. That gasket looked like it stayed on okay. And then we have one here, wait a second. All right, so then on this one right here, this is going to get one of these guys on there. And this one came off of a 400EX because they don't sell these any longer, and it's not supposed to be bent. So, it's supposed to be flat, so let's make this baby flat. And there we go. Close enough for me. So then it goes on this one right here. And then we got one more screw right here. Just want to snug them down. They have lock washers on them, so they should be secured. Yeah. And then, okay, so now we have this guy. Let's see if we put it this way. We're going to need one of these. 
This guy goes right on here. And then that goes there. And then we should twist it. And then it goes down through here. There, and now we're out of the way. Perfect. Now let's zip this guy on. All right, there's that. And now we have one more tube. We have the drain tube, the overflow tube, which is going to go right on here like so. There you go. And we have one carburetor ready to rock and roll. Now, of course, we have a gas line that goes here, but uh, we're gonna hook that up as soon as we go out to the machine. And I think we're ready because we also have, oh, we have one more thing to do. Let's hook up our throttle needle and then we can get out to the machine. All right, so this guy right here, the way it works, is we're gonna reuse the old one. They gave us a, whoa, trippy, it's stuck. They gave us a new one of these, but we're gonna reuse the old one. So here's our new needle. This is our old one, but we're gonna use the new one because this one's bent and this one is not. And we have us our, old, our, uh, our new little clip right here. And yeah, okay, the way this works is... All right, now as you can see right here, here's the diagram. This is the first slot, the second slot, the third slot, the fourth slot, the fifth slot. And we're gonna have to put this little clip into one of these slots. Now, you wanna read it here. We're building the uh, 86 standard setting. This is after 86, which means the 87 is the third groove. And also, Right here, the B and C is the third groove, and the A is the second groove. Now, the way this works is the A... So the way this works right here is you can see that A is for the second groove, and that's if we are running a 122 main jet and a 36 slow jet. We are running the 36 slow jet, but we're running a 112 main. So the 112 main says B and C, which is the third groove. So we got the 112 main, not the 122. We're running the 112. So we want to use B and C as the uh, slot that we're going to put the needle in. And back to this page right here, and back to this page, and you can see B and C is the third groove. So since we're running the 112 main, we're going to put it on the third groove. Boom. So this, of course, gets kind of tricky, but what we're going to do, this guy right here, it's universal each way. It doesn't have a, a woo, don't drop that guy on the floor. We'll never see it again. But it doesn't have a top or a bottom. It just, uh, you can universal, you can put it whichever way you feel necessary. So. We need to locate the third groove. The easiest way to do this is to rest it on something hard and shove it down. Just like that. And hope that we're in the third groove. So there you go. We are in the third groove. That's where we would like to be. So. Let's get her down. All right, so we used these for a reason. We're gonna need these again. So what we're gonna do now, as you can see in there, the needle drops into the hole, just like that. And then this guy right here, you can see where the old one was. 
So we're just going to pick it up with these guys compressed on in there. And it's going to go drop it down in there. Boom. See, it just snaps in there like so. And I'm crazy like that, but I'm going to put it back where uh, the old one was. Ooh, got to snap it all down to make sure. All right, so make sure that you, uh, after you get that in there, make sure that you uh, use something like a screwdriver or a pick or I got this handy dandy little thing. But uh, yeah, that one wasn't all the way down. So make sure you get the ends down underneath the slots. Boom. There it is. So now our needle can still spin around, but it can't come back out. We're on the third groove. We're ready to rock. Now we've got our spring. And now we can go hook up our throttle cable. It's going to come up through here and go into the slot right there. And uh, yeah, and then this side is going to go into the carburetor. Let's go get this thing on the machine, man. Let's do it. We're ready to rock and roll. Let's go get this thing assembled. Yeah, so now all we got left. Woo, I'm going to explain it to you out there. Let's go. I can't wait. Let's get this thing fired up. Fire it up. Yeah, hit, hit it. Fire it up. Let the engines roll. It's time to burn it down. Uh, anyway, let's get that uh, fuel line hooked up and see how we did with the gas tank. All right, here we have our uh, the tube that we just cut a little while ago, and we put the OEM uh, clips on here. In case you missed that part, this is a 4.5 millimeter by 80 millimeter long uh, fuel line. That is the stock size for here. So what we're going to do is since I cut this diagonal on accident a little bit we'll put that side on the fuel tank get that hooked up on there make sure it goes all the way down yes and then this side we'll just curve on down make sure it goes all the way down yes and then we'll just slide these clips up and over into the little groove there we go and then we'll slide this one down. You might not see it because my big ass arms are going to get in the way, but let's just turn that clip all the way around. Because this is where I should have put it. It was right there. Now we got her. So we're clipped up. We are fuel lined up. We are gas tanked up. Well, let's see if this dog starts. And let's see if it runs any better now that we did that. If you want to watch the tuning and all that stuff to see where we left off. You can go back and watch the video here. Now that you're back, after you've uh, watched that, you can compare it and we can see how we did. Let's fire it up. Fire it up. Let the engines roll. It's time to burn it down. Mm, 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 mm. Shout out to the Black Label Society, man. Phoenix chapter, bleed black. All right, folks, check it out. Graphics are on. Tank is on. Fuel lines ready. Let's turn the gas on. I hope we don't leak. So far, so good. No leaking. All right, let's try to fire it up and see what happens. Oh, 
Well, first kick. Alright, let's throw the GoPro on and take it for a little longer spin and see how she rolls. Look at that fine piece of machinery. Woo! Let's take it for a longer ride and see if we can't get it up to speed a little bit.
jumping this thing yet. That's some firewood if we need some. Legal, but I'm doing it anyhow. Uh oh, we got some uh, branches down. This looks like good as place as any for a donut, right? Oh, let's go up there, nice and flat. There's a full donut. is it? That wouldn't be cool. Doesn't look like it. I should have been paying attention. I didn't have these lights secured down and uh, one of them's gone. So we're gonna have to retrace the steps to try to find uh, my light. <laughs> I knew that was like that. I should have chopped them things off before I took a ride. my light. that baby right up man I didn't even see that we jumped it Woo!
she runs pretty good. Now, I only got one light in there, and I need to find my other LED. <laughs> that wasn't cool. So let's go try to find that guy. I gotta go find my light. Which we dropped somewhere, so let's get on the old, uh... Let's get on the 400EX and go try to find that son of a bitch, because uh, that sucks. Alright, folks, check it out. So, we took the old... 400 EX down the road and voila, there it is. The other light. Yeah, it was laying out in the road. Uh, it was laying down by the cemetery when we went by the cemetery down there. It was laying in the side of the gravel down there. So, cool. We got our other LED, so we'll be, we'll be getting back down into that for sure. So, all right, folks, that wraps this guy up for now. And we will definitely visit this again because we have to do the headlight, the LEDs, and the wiring and stuff. But what I'm doing is I decided I'm going to hook up a battery to it. So we're going to go for the full regulator rectifier, AC to DC with a battery and a charger and everything. I have a battery already. And it came in this guy right here, which is next. We're on to that. Yeah. It wasn't quite the proper battery for this. Someone had the wrong battery in there, but it's good. So check it out. We have this battery right here and I have an extra 400 EX battery tray, uh, which is in my bin of parts right there. And we're gonna hook up a battery and a regular rectifier, regulator rectifier, charging everything. So I think I'm gonna use a regulator rectifier from a 200 SX from a TRX 200 SX because this is basically the same motor and I looked at the wiring and these stators put out exactly the same amount of watts so this this uh, 200 X stator is very capable of charging a battery so that wraps up this build make sure you subscribe make sure you subscribe because this guy right here we're gonna start stripping it down. Yep, 2006 YFZ 450. We're gonna be starting to strip this guy all the way down to the frame and we're gonna rebuild it back up again. And I have big plans for it. Uh, we're gonna go for an awesome paint scheme. Um, I'm not gonna reveal it, but it's gonna be pretty, pretty clean and pretty awesome. I have uh, pretty cool ideas for it, so yeah. Let's get on to this and then we'll come back and revisit this when it gets cooler out and we can work in the garage and we can come back and finish the wiring up here. Uh, yep, we already got the tail light stuff hooked up, but we'll get all, all that together. And for right now, let's just call this done. So you know what time it is. Peace out, Girl Scouts. Woo!